So what an interesting chapter Exodus 4 turned out to be. Let's dive right in. Verse 1. Moses continued his doubt and disbelief. And the New Living Translation actually said that he continued to protest. So he continued to tell God, you know, um, what if, what if, what if. And we have a tendency to do that too. Verse 2 through 5. God told Moses to throw his staff down and then turn into a snake. And then God told Moses to take the snake by the tail and it turned into, I wrote snake, but I meant to say a staff again. The Lord said this is how they will know that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has sent Moses. And so God is giving Moses these signs that he will show the people to tell them, you know, yes, I'm not just making this up. I'm not just some, you know, guy coming out of nowhere telling you all this stuff. This is the same God that we all know, right? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, he has sent me and these are the signs. And I thought it was interesting because yes, one can criticize Moses because he keeps questioning and questioning and questioning God. Believe me, I've done that so many times. I'm sure you can relate too. However, when God told Moses to throw his staff down, Moses did it. Um, he didn't question, you know, why, why do, why should I throw my staff down? That makes no sense. Um, and then when God told Moses to pick the staff up the the staff was a snake at that point and you know it must have been a huge snake because when he threw the staff down and it turned into a snake it said that he you know backed up he was afraid and he ran from it so this is a guy who's out in the wilderness I'm sure he's seen all kinds of animals um, he you know tends to animals for a living this must have been a pretty serious snake for him <laughs> to kind of back away from it However, when God says, okay, go grab the snake by the tail, he didn't hesitate and say, what? You know, I don't want to die or that's a big snake or, you know, he didn't say that. He did it. And so, yes, Moses was questioning God's plan, right? But at the end of the day, um, I wrote, Moses didn't know what would happen to the snake when he reached for it, but he did it anyway by faith. So although he was afraid that others wouldn't receive him, you know, with this plan that God is telling him about, he did show faith in God in this way. So, you know, that is just one small way that, at least to me, you know, that Moses is a man of faith. He is a man of God. God said, you know, reach down and grab the snake by the tail. So he reached down and grabbed the snake by the tail. He didn't ask, you know, he didn't wonder, you know, God, will I get bitten? Will you protect me? He just did it. And so while he is doubting God's plan, he doesn't doubt um, that God will protect him in this way. Um, so I thought that was really cool. Then verses six through eight. God gave Moses a second sign. So God, you know, is showing, it ends up being three signs altogether because God says, you know, just in case they don't believe the first sign, they'll believe the second. If they don't believe the second, then here's the third. So the second one is his hand became, he said, put your hand in your cloak. And then he pulled it out and it was white and leprous. Um, and then God said, you know, put it back in your cloak again. And then it was normal. So that was the second sign. And back then, <laughs> leprosy, you could think of it as like the coronavirus today. It's so crazy how things come full circle. But no one wanted to get near you if you had leprosy. It was forbidden. You know, it was social distancing 101. <laughs> so, you know, the fact that he could put his hand in his cloak and pull it back out and it was, uh, it was free of leprosy again was... Um, a second sign. And then verses eight through nine, God expected the people to not listen. So the third sign, Moses would take water from the Nile, pour it on dry ground, and it wouldn't turn into blood. And you know, as far as this goes, if I saw that happen, I'd be like, you know what? I'm convinced now <laughs> that third sign would seal the deal for me. Um, verses 10 through 13, Moses questions God's choice. And he said, you know, God, are you sure you want to choose me? I can't speak that well. I can't lead these people. You know, why are you choosing me? And God assures Moses, you know, who gave you your mouth? You know, I will help you speak. Don't worry. And we tend to do that too. You know, God, are you sure you, you know, you sure you wanted me to have this hard, difficult life? You know, are you sure that it is me that you want to do this for you? And, you know, God is telling him, Yes, I created you. I am 100% sure. So sometimes when God chooses us and calls us to do something, we shouldn't question. We should just do it. And then he says, now go. I will help and teach you. And it's the same for us today. 
if you are contemplating something, just jump into it. God will help you. He will teach you. I will help you and I will teach you. Go, step out, do it. Um, I'm moving on to verses 14 through 17. The Lord became angry, yet didn't display that anger. He told Moses that his brother Aaron was on the way to meet him and that Aaron will speak to the people and God will work through Moses to speak to Aaron. So let me back that up. <laughs> the word said God became angry and that gave me a little bit of comfort in a weird way because I become angry. We all become angry. But how does God use that anger? Does he react and is harsh with moses no he's not in fact he's the opposite he's loving god is love and you know there's nothing in his response that leads me to believe that he was angry if it didn't say god became angry i wouldn't have thought he was angry and we should really follow that um example it's okay to be angry it's not okay to display that anger especially towards someone else and so god was very composed with his answer and he said you know what he can understand that moses is afraid so he said here your brother will speak to the people for you and god will work through moses and moses will kind of um talk to aaron and teach him god will work through moses to speak to aaron and then god reminds moses hey don't forget the staff take the staff so i don't know i just thought it was really cool that this was included in the bible this whole you know dialogue between moses and god because moses will go on to do great things however it's important that this is in the Bible too. And God shows us that even Moses doubted and even Moses, you know, said to God, well, are you sure you want to choose me? You know, uh, Moses is someone who was cast away. He wasn't anyone, you know, that the world at this time saw was super important. So, you know, of course he questions God, but you know, God, if he calls you, and he tells you to go, he will also help you and teach you along the way. And he says that to all of us. Now go, each and every one of us, we are to go out there and to show others God's love and he will help and he will teach us and he will show you specific things that you can do as well. But we have to step out and go just like Moses stepped out and reached for the snake, even though he didn't know what will happen when he reached for the snake, he still did it anyway. So verse 18, Moses asked his father-in-law Jethro to go and Jethro, you know, gave him his blessing. He bid him farewell. Verses 19 through 20, Moses, his family and the staff, I'm glad I included the staff, they journeyed to Midian and God said the people who wanted him dead there were now gone. Verse 21, God said that he will harden Pharaoh's heart. And I just wondered why, you know, if you're sending Moses to do something, why would it be, you know, why would God make it more difficult? And I, I'm not saying that as if I'm questioning God. I'm just honestly curious. But one thing about faith that I've learned is we don't know the answers to everything, nor will we ever know. And there are some things about God that I've just accepted that I don't know and I don't need to know, <laughs> but God knows. And because he did it, then there must be a reason that, you know, that he is good and he knows of. That's good enough for me. Verse 22, God wanted to tell Moses, no, God wanted Moses to tell Pharaoh that Israel is God's firstborn son and to let his son go and worship him. But God knew that Pharaoh would refuse to let his son go. And so Pharaoh's firstborn will be killed. And then it gets a little confusing. Verses 24 through 26, the way that it is worded, at least in the NIV, it sounds like God met Moses and was about to kill Moses. However, there's a resource that I found and I will link it in the description box. Please go read it. Check it out because if it wasn't for this resource, I would have no idea. I was so confused. I'm like, why would God call Moses and then try to kill him? But actually, the original, the way that it was originally written, it was originally written verse 24 and it came to pass by the way in the end that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. And that's supposed to be a break in the story. It doesn't say Moses in the original writing of the Bible. However, the NIV says Moses. Verse 25, then Zipporah took a sharp stone, this is something totally separate, um, and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, surely uh, a bloody husband art thou to me. Verse 26, so he let him go. Then she said, a bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision. Basically, what happened here is verse 24 is talking about Pharaoh. The Lord met Pharaoh and sought to kill him. Um, and that is totally separate. And some uh, versions, I guess, separate verse 24 and 25 and have like a totally different heading, which would make sense. 
Um, and verse 25, then Zipporah took a sharp stone, cut off the forcing skin of her son and cast it at his being Moses's feet and said, surely a bloody husband art thou to me. So he, which is Moses, let him go their son, the him, the second him is their son. And then she said, a bloody husband thou art. And people speculate that Moses circumcised his son on his way back to Egypt because he did not want his son to be considered one of the Egyptians. Rather, he wanted him to be spared and be considered one of the Israelites. And since his wife Zipporah is not from Israel, remember he met her when he ran, she didn't understand, you know, she was probably like, why are we doing this gruesome thing to our child? And so she threw the foreskin at Moses's feet, verse 25, and called him a bloody husband in verse 26. So he let him go. So Moses was probably holding their son to circumcise him. Um, and then she said, a bloody husband you are, you know, because of the circumcision. That is truly the explanation of what happened here. It wasn't God trying to kill Moses because I got so confused. And if I did not explain that right, um, again, check out the link in the description box. Read the article for yourself. It is broken down really beautifully and it allowed me to understand what was going on in these passages. Verse 27 through 28, Moses gets Aaron up to speed in the wilderness. So he tells Aaron what's going on <laughs> in verse 29 through 31. Moses and Aaron spoke to the elders and the elders believe the signs that Moses showed them with the staff. When they heard that God was concerned for them, they worshiped. And I thought that was really nice because, you know, sometimes I'm in the middle of life as we all are. And you get kind of like this loving nudge from God. If that ever happened to you, something will happen and you'll think, you know, wow, God really does remember that I'm here. He really does love me. And I'll start to worship. And I guess they were in this place as well. And I thought that was really cool. So that is it. That's all I have for today. It was a lot of action going on. Let me know what you learned um, and what you gained from this chapter. I love reading your comments. Um, share this video. Like it if you liked it. It helps for um, the YouTube algorithm to uh, show my video to other people, for other people to find these videos. I post a new Bible study video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I can't wait to study the Bible with you again. Bye.